Uh, welcome to our short discussion on ERPR biomarkers made easy. ER stands for estrogen receptor, while PR stands for progesterone receptor. To further understand, cell receptors are actually proteins, and they can be located on the surface of the cell or on the inside of the cell. They're called receptors because they receive signals. That's why they're also called the eyes and ears of the cell. Because whenever uh, there's a particular substance or a ligand, they would actually detect it and bind to it. Some would be very specific for a certain substance. So this is how it works. The receptor is here and it would be specific for a certain substance. For example, this receptor is specific for estrogen. Then it would only bind to a ligand or to a substance that is estrogen. So when we say ER positive, means a cell has an estrogen receptor, while a progesterone receptor positive means it has a receptor for progesterone. Conversely, if it's ER, PR negative, meaning it does not have any of these receptors. So what's the importance of knowing whether these receptors exist or not? It's because the pathophysiology of breast cancer would largely depend on increased estrogen exposure, or to be more specific, an opposed estrogen exposure. Because this unopposed ex estrogen exposure would result to an increased risk for developing breast cancer. Why is that so? It's because uh, estrogen has this effect that when a receptor is present on a breast cell, then it would continuously stimulate that cell leading to its overgrowth problem. That's why we often encounter breast cancer among patients who have never given birth before. It, estrogen has continuously stimulated their breast cells. Unlike when a woman gets pregnant, some hormones predominate like the HCG, like the progesterone. So the estrogen would somewhat be um, opposed during these periods of pregnancy, unlike when a person has never given birth before. So it's called a hormonal risk factor because it's something to do with the hormone. And hormones play a role in the development and progression of breast cancer. How do we know if a person or if a patient has ER or PR on the cells? That's when we take samples. This, these samples can be obtained by biopsy whether with the use of a fine needle or a core needle. So when we differentiate these two, a fine needle makes use of a fine needle. So the gauge is just so small, so the sample would also follow. It would only be able to aspirate small amounts like blood, so called core needle, because the needle bore is larger, meaning it can take larger specimens just like what's shown here so why do we test for erpr because we want to determine the response to hormone therapy and we also want to identify patients who are most likely to benefit from endocrine therapy so to make it simpler we test this specimen for erpr so that we would know if they would be able to respond to hormone therapy. Meaning, if these hormone receptors are present, ERPR, then we could give medications that actually target these receptors. Unlike if these receptors are not present, then we could not give hormone th hormonal therapy because we could not target that specific cell because it doesn't have receptors. Hormonal therapy is otherwise known as an anti-estrogen therapy. So we give something that would counteract the effects of estrogen. So the action of this uh, therapy would be to lower the amount of estrogen in our body or to block the estrogen from supporting growth and function of the breast cells. So it's either we lower or we block the estrogen from binding to that specific receptor. Indications, one is tamoxifen. And the other one is the aromatase inhibitor. 
like the letrozole and the anastrozole. So this is where aromatase acts. Androstenedione and testosterone are actually hormone precursors. And then aromatase would act on them so that estrogen will be produced. So the action of aromatase inhibitors like the letrozole and anastrozole is to inhibit this enzyme so that they will not be able to convert these substances into estrogen forms. These are actually estrogen forms. Meanwhile, anti-estrogens, the tamoxifen for example, would block the effect of estrogen. So the estrogen is already here and the anti-estrogens like tamoxifen would block its effect on cells. So the estrogen receptor is located in the cytosol and the function of tamoxifen is to bind the estrogen receptor. Thereby, it will block estrogen uptake by the breast tissue because the receptor is already occupied. So the estrogen will not be able to bind to that specific receptor. However, this medication has its adverse effects. With long-term use, it may cause endometrial cancer. Why would that be? It's because while we know that tamoxifen is an anti-estrogen for the breasts, it has a different effect on the endometrium or on the uterus, on the cells that line the uterus. Because tamoxifen will stimulate the thickening of the endometrium. That's why it may cause endometrial cancer in the long-term use. So we can do something about this. We only give tamoxifen for a limited period of 5 years and then we shift it to another medication like the aromatase inhibitor. Some other side effects are blood clots and stroke but these are usually not common. Next is the aromatase inhibitors. We mentioned they are the letrozole and anastrozole. The first line adjuvant in postmenopausal women. Again, it's important to know that these are the first line adjuvants in postmenopausal women. And they are also the secondary agents after one to two years of adjuvant tamoxifen therapy. We just mentioned earlier that um, usually tamoxifen is discontinued after five years of use and, re and will be replaced by aromatase inhibitor. But some journals would say um, the, it's better if we use tamoxifen only for for one to two years and then replace it with aromatase inhibitors in order to prevent the occurrence of endometrial cancer. However, just like any medications, aromatase inhibitors would also have its own fair share of adverse effect. It will result to decrease bone mineral density, thereby resulting to osteoporosis and may result to fractures specifically among postmenopausal women. Estrogen has a role in the regulation of bone remodeling, regulate the osteoclastic bone resorption. The, the osteoclasts actually destroy the bones. In normal conditions, it is usually regulated by estrogen. However, with the absence or with the decreased amount of estrogen, then the osteoclast will continuously destroy the bone, thus the decreased bone mineral density.